how fast do your feet move when you're running? I mean, have you even ever given that any thought? Well, today I'm going to be looking at cadence, otherwise known as strides per minute, covering what it is, why it matters, and how to improve yours. Cadence is simply the number of strides you take per minute and a lot of smartwatches will automatically measure that but just be aware they quite often take just one foot so just your left or just your right foot per minute and that would be if you get a number somewhere between say 70 and 90 you just simply need to double it to get your actual strides per minute and yes this can be referred to as SPM or cadence or strides per minute it's all interchangeable and if you don't have a smartwatch but you want to work out your strides per minute it's pretty simple you just need to count how many strides you take over a 60 second period. Now we know how to find our cadence, how do we know if it's good or not? Well this is a difficult one as there is no solid perfect answer but 180 strides per minute has often been that target for runners and this comes from studies in elite long distance runners who tend to have an average of around 180 strides per minute but we do need to remember when looking at this number that most of us aren't elite long distance runners so we're unlikely to be running as fast as them and it is an average and there's obviously going to be outliers either side of that. That said, a lot of us could benefit with increasing our cadence, even if just by a few strides per minute, as a low cadence is often associated with overstriding, and with that comes a dominant heel strike and normally a slower or longer ground contact time, which can in turn lead to injuries as you're putting more impact up through your joints. Plus, you're going to be a less efficient runner. But if you do want more detail on the running gait and foot strike, then do check out our video on how to run properly. Okay, back to cadence. You've realized that you could benefit from increasing your strides per minute. That's great, but how? Well, I've got a selection of drills here that will get you moving your feet faster and have them spending less time on the ground. We'll start off very simple, just jogging on the spot, nice and easy. And then for 10 seconds, I want you to move your feet as fast as you can. And remember to pump your arms really fast as well, as if your arms are moving fast, your feet will naturally follow. Have a rest, recover, and then repeat it again. So this is exaggerating over the top speed with your strides per minute. And then you can progress this out to actually covering some distance. So set out a distance of say around 10 meters. It doesn't need to be exact. And I want you to run that distance pretty fast but concentrating on most importantly moving those feet as fast as you can again recover and repeat it and if you do maybe have some paving stones or some natural lines on the ground then great you can even use those to practice touching each one and just getting those feet moving really fast and if you're really lucky and maybe you've got some equipment to hand then one of those step ladders or mini hurdles are an even better way of reiterating that fast feet Skipping with a rope is another great drill because you're going to find it pretty hard to skip well when having really heavy, slow feet. So literally just do 30 seconds of light skipping, concentrate on making it as fast as you can manage, put your skipping rope down and go and jog for 30 seconds or so. Come back and then repeat it again. And when you're actually out running, there are a few aids that can help remind you of your cadence. The first one's rather nice. Download some music that's at the rate of your strides per minute you want to hit. And you'll be amazed at what difference that can make because it's quite a sort of subconscious thing that you'll just find naturally your cadence is probably going to match that music if it's close to where you would normally be. Not quite as pleasant, but probably as effective as a metronome. You can simply download a buzzer or something on your phone that's just going to beep in your every time you need your right or your left foot to touch the ground maybe not as sociable but if you do want something that's a bit more sociable and you've got a selection of runner friends then try to run with someone who's got a slightly quicker cadence than you and you quite often find again subconsciously that you will start to match their stride pattern I've got a few friends who I have a very similar cadence to and it's quite soothing to run at that pace I find that when Fraser and I are doing a long steady run we have quite a similar run pattern too and it just kind of feels quite natural and nice and another thing if there's some little steps or something that's in the natural terrain of where you're running some short sharp steps are a great way just to pick up in the middle of your run and do some quick snappy fast feet or even incorporate a drill into a long run 
Like I said earlier, there is no perfect number as we all run in different ways and at different speeds. And I thought it'd be interesting to have a little comparison between Mark Fraser and myself. So those guys have given me their numbers for a 5K. So let's drive per minute for a hard 5K. Um, Mark came in at 170 strides per minute, Fraser 180. And then I was in the middle with 176, which doesn't really support any theories at the moment. Then I also compared our long steady runs and Mark came in at around 162. Fraser 165 and myself at 170. Now that makes more sense as my legs are shorter and therefore I'm likely to take a quicker stride as a result. And finally, I thought we'd compare something over a race distance that's hillier. And the boys have given me their results from Norseman and Keltman respectively. And I've used my result from Conrad's, which admittedly is a bit different. And it shows in these numbers here because Mark at Norseman took 146 tries per minute on average for his marathon. Fraser was very close. 145 in Keltman. Now you have to bear in mind that both of those guys were running at the end of a triathlon having already swam and biked and it was incredibly hilly and off-road because my comrades marathon which was a sort of 87k of running and it was uphill I actually still had a stride length of 172 but that just goes to show the difference that the terrain can make and also the type of race it is. Following on from that, I want to quickly address some of the factors that could contribute to the variety in strides per minute between different runners. You've got your running experience, so how much running you've been doing, how long you've been running for and to what level. The type of running that you're doing, what you're training for. Are you training for an ultra marathon or trying to break your PB over a 5k? That's going to make a big difference. Then you've got the terrain that you're running on, uphill, downhill, flat, that will make a difference, as will what's actually underfoot if you're running on something really soft and heavy compared to say asphalt. Age and weight will of course affect your gait as will height but more importantly your length of your legs as the longer your legs are the more likely to have a longer stride and therefore a lower cadence and finally speed as the faster you run you've either got to have a longer stride or a faster stride rate or a combination of both. As you can see, a lot of those factors can't even be changed. There's no point in chasing a cadence that's completely unattainable or just too unnatural for yourself. And after all, we're basically just all trying to become more efficient runners. So focus on what's going to be the optimum cadence for you and work towards that. On that note, please don't get too obsessed with the number on your watch for your cadence whilst you're actually running. Because if you're continually looking at your watch, then you're not going to find any rhythm and it'll ruin your running efficiency. And after all, that is what we're trying to improve. Improve. Instead, just practice the drills and then try and relax when you're out running. I know that's easier said than done, but you can analyze the numbers once you're home. So think about how that run felt, look at your cadence and then compare that to your next run and you'll soon start to realize what's going to be working for you and what your optimum is. And if you do start to actually incorporate these drills on a regular basis, then I'm pretty sure you will see a change in your cadence. And if this has been helpful, well, give us a like and do let us know what you find working works for you. We'd love to hear from you guys. You can do that in the comments section below. Remember, you can check out all of our social media channels, give them a follow and do subscribe to our YouTube channel too.